Up until this point in the course, we've discussed how to write HTML code. But what happens when you encounter a bug and need to figure out what went wrong? There are two primary types of errors you'll encounter when writing code. The first type of error is a syntax error, where you've accidentally typed something wrong. Maybe you spelled header incorrectly or forgot the closing forward slash. The second type of error is a logic error, where the code is written correctly, but you've coded logic or structure that you didn't mean to code. HTML is parsed permissively, which means that the page will still display even with syntax errors. The displayed page might not look like you intended it to look, but it will still render. Let's try this out. Suppose you're building the navigation for your portfolio site, but you have a syntax bug. Instead of typing header, you accidentally swapped the A and E in the tag name. Will the page still render? It does. Again, this is because HTML still renders with syntax errors. But what if you incorrectly nest an element? We mentioned in the nesting elements chapter that certain elements cannot be nested inside one another, and the closing tags must pair with the opening tags in the DOM hierarchy. But what if we don't follow these rules? Here we have a main section with a div and a heading. But instead of nesting the elements properly, we've attempted to close the div element before closing the heading element. And if we check the browser, the page still renders. You can also see we have no console errors. If we head to the elements tab, we can see our HTML nodes are rendered as a DOM tree. We can expand nested elements and highlight them in the UI. And if we right click a node in the inspector, we get a list of menu items to add additional functionality. We can add an attribute, duplicate, delete, even force state, a focus or active, which is really helpful when working with components like tooltips. You can take a screenshot of a node as well if you need to send a colleague a photo of the node's appearance during a debugging session, or a designer wants to see the state of the UI during a design review. In the bottom right quadrant of the Elements tab, we can even add event listeners and apply custom styling to the node. For example, I can add a two pixel solid blue border to my main content area. And you'll notice that the diagram underneath the code updates. This is a representation of the Elements box model. If you want to learn more about the box model, I recommend taking the CSS for Programmers course. And once you're done debugging, you can refresh the browser and all of your changes will disappear. Learning how to debug HTML in the browser console is an important skill and will save you a lot of time. So be sure to practice it during your HTML coding journey.